All right, speaking of doing better, how about those 76ers? Oh, TTP! We're screwed. Hashtag we're screwed. Clap Mark Alfonso's jump shot is back. All right, so this is where I want to start. Keep the comments coming in, people, if you will. Uh, this is where I want to start. And we're watching a video of Markel Fultz hit the jumper. We're watching a video. Is that of my Markel. video? Yeah. It's, I, is that is that when my pants came off? Yeah. This is. When, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is when Adrian FedQ takes to uh, the, the internet, the Twitter page, and says, "Oh, my pants are off right now," <laughs> because Markel Fultz, the number, and I'm not. I'm giving you a hard time. I am happy that you're excited. I'd rather have you than somebody tell me the kid's a bust. But this is this is where it all comes full circle. I feel like we allowed those negative voices. And I did not allow them. A, a lot of people did. <laughs> That's true. A lot of people did. I shut them a down. A lot of people did. Because now we're, looking, little... now we're looking at a number one overall pick and we're excited because he's hitting a free throw. Like, what is going on with us? We are way out of pocket right now when we're looking at Markel Fultz. Everybody. The people that said he was a bust. To the biggest defenders of him, uh, Drew Hanlon. I'm, people are getting Drew Hanlon's name on it, you know, tattooed on his shoulder. And never shit. has to pay for a drink yeah, again in he's Philly. Got a statue built of him. You know, I'm seeing Liberty <laughs> Ballers talk about that. Enough already. The kid is a number one overall pick in the NBA draft. You know, we've seen bust before. A bust didn't have a triple double in. 13 games in 13 yeah. games of his rookie season right. was Markel off. Absolutely. Was he dealing with some issues? A hundred percent. Should we be excited? I'm with you, but I think we're over the top people. Holy shit. Oh, I would agree with that. Number one. I, I, I would agree with pick that. here. I would agree with yeah, that. He's hitting, he's, he's hitting uh you know, his mid range game looks fine. Looks I mean, what was he like? One for five last night in threes. Yeah. And that happens. Yeah. That's not good. No, but I mean, he's he, not he's, Steph Curry, but he's taking yeah. five. Five it, three it, pointers. It's, it's the fact that he's taking them. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, it, it, you know, it it reminds me back of how he looked at that freshman year at Washington. I mean, I made the player comparison. He reminded me of Dwayne Wade a lot, just silky smooth in the mid range game. And finally, we saw it last night. Yeah, that's why the pants came off. Man, but but is, I did. I put him great. back on. Keep your yeah. pants on. Yeah, please. I put him back on at halftime, so I was good. Uh, but but dude. You're right about that. Exactly. The, the, the chase down block. The yeah, the chase down the block. The defense we heard when he was getting drafted, what we hear about his wingspan, you know, yeah. the athleticism. His arms are yeah, the wingspan and, 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 and that's what it's all about. You know, he's able to get to the rim when he wants. Again, you know, like I, I, I don't know. Maybe my voice wasn't, you know, like I was completely in the minority last year. But I saw what I needed to saw, see from the kid last year in that limited action. That I was like, okay, you know, he's going to bounce back. He's going to, you know, he's going to give you 13, 14 points per game this year. Like that, that's, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's about where I got him at. And I think yeah. that we would all sign off for that. Maybe it might be a little under that. Maybe it might be a little over that. Excuse me. It's fair. It's fair to be critical if you think that the team gave up too much to get him. And that's certainly debatable. And that's a fair point. But and I think that's he where was Tony's the coming from. Yeah. That, but, but what happens is. When you're when you're always in absolute these draft it's always it's there is no guarantees in any draft you know this guy got drafted before this guy does that mean well it's, it matters how you evaluate it matters how you evaluate and you know Fultz the idea of Fultz was the perfect complement to uh, Simmons and B yeah. that was available there yeah I you know we keep collect we make fun of it when we just trade for draft picks over and over and over and then I was you know, I was okay with hey let's let's cash in the chip somewhere let's cash in the chip to make a move to try and make the team complete last year it didn't look out that that well but you can't you can't call a guy a bust after a year, especially if he's going through some sort of crisis of confidence at 19 years old. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous that any adult person over the age of 25, let's say, I don't know, like have some some emotional maturity in life. Like the the kid was 20, 19 years old. But there was there were a lot of people out there that were worried that uh, well, you know what it is. You see a guy like Ben Simmons who is running around dating the models. I know people have problems with that. But just, you know, even though he has flaws, he still comes off as that number one Oh, yeah, he's confident, guy. right, yeah. And that's when people were looking at him going, damn, you know, we're getting more of a McNabb-type-ish 
added. We're getting to, a Nelson Aguilar. That's well, I mean, you know, in, in a way, I'm and just I'm confidence. Talking, thing. Yeah, I get it. I know you're right. It, it, what it is is, oh, this guy's fucking sucks. Yeah. He's a bust. This is they're asshole. They don't know what they're doing. It's just like, yo, 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 yeah. yo, yeah. yo. He can shoot. Yeah, something's going on. He can't shoot right now. Does that mean he can never shoot again? And the world is crumbling. And I'm gonna jump off the bridge. No, just chill out. We're going to have to give it time. Well, that, that is ridiculous. We have given the. Oh, my God. It's, it's fucking. It's basketball. Could, it's could, just, just root, for, root for the team. Who's the guy we got? Let's have fun with it. Mark checks in and says he took 150,000 shots this summer. Muscle memory. Hey, I don't care what he's got to do. Yeah, muscle memory. That's, that's really what it is. Oh, it is. Well, it's more confidence than. Well, yes. 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 Confidence yes. and muscle memory too. Confidence. The, the, the confidence was, is huge. The shot was shot. Right. Yeah. So, but the confidence is everything. But, but the shot was shot because he's confident. One thing I, uh, I heard Drew Hanlon talk about, and it, it wasn't about Mark Al Fultz specifically or any, any player specifically, but some ways that he works with people is he recognizes, I'm sure every shot doctor does it, a lot of it has to do with confidence. I need a shot doctor. So, uh, so what, after Sunday, I don't need, I don't need any shots. I need a shot doctor. I don't need shots at all. <laughs> but what was interesting, what he said was, sometimes when he has a player in and he's looking, you know, check him out, and he'll make suggestions to the player. When he feels that it, 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 it's a confidence issue, he'll make slight recommendations to a player that really probably don't really affect too much. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, hey, man, your elbow is just a little bit out wide too much. Just, just tuck that in just a little bit. Because when the player starts hitting shots after – Make I'm using quotes making that correction. Mm -hmm. The confidence starts built building. Even though Drew Hanlon didn't really do anything to massively alter the shot, he just did enough to get that confidence back where they start shooting it, feeling good and not hesitating and all that stuff to get you know you get up in your head. So I thought that was interesting. Fultz's shot, the 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 three pointer that went in looked smooth. The the foul shots still kind of look kind of choppy. But again, I was listening to who was I listening to? I was listening to an NBA podcast. I think it was maybe Zach Lowe podcast or something like that. And someone was saying, hey, well, remember when Reggie Miller came in? His shot looked all – I mean, even think of Reggie Miller now. Like his, it, it's it's yeah. weird and goofy. Yeah, to, yeah it pushes. Yeah. And But Reggie Miller is one of the greatest shooters that ever. the game has ever seen. Find your stroke. So it doesn't necessarily – I mean, you know, we'd like to see a traditional like, like Embiid watching the white player shoot. You know, yeah. you'd love to see everyone <laughs> – I'd love to see him shoot like Redick, you know, trigger, you know – quick trigger and, and, and accurate and I have that form. But, you know, if it's not that way, the ball has to go in the hoop. Last night, the ball was going – all that mid-range and, and, and yeah. inside the key, that that looked great. The three-point percentage needs to get better, but, you and know. Now, and yeah, now they're and, over and, in China. And that, and that is yeah. a question I did have from him at, at Washington. Does, does he have the range on the three-pointer? Because uh, I know he's got the mid-range game. Uh, the the other thing I noticed too about the shot, because because we saw like a couple clips on, on the Twitter or the Instagram, and the the release looked kind of you know low. But when I'm watching him last night, the the release looks pretty high. Yeah, pretty high. Yeah, yeah. he looks he looked good. Yeah. Again, just just give me the confidence. Shoot, shoot you know, pull up with with that solid demeanor and just stroke it, dude. Do yep. what you've been doing. You're the, you're the number one overall pick for a freaking reason. And I and I feel like we've we've lost sight of that with everything we've dealt with, and uh, I I understand it, but at the same time, the kid showed us uh, flashes last year in limited time. Did he get passed over in the playoffs for T.J. McConnell? Yes. Was it the right decision? Probably. Probably was. Probably yeah. And does that sting that the number one overall pick is doing that, and Jason Tatum was doing what he was doing? Absolutely. But does that mean it's going to be like this four years down the road? No. Does that mean it's going to be like that this year? Hell no. So just everybody like, I, I, you know, listen to me. I'm trying to, you know, poo-poo it, the excitement. And when is the, what, the second playoff game or a preseason game? Well, really it's a, the it, first it's, preseason it's the preseason game. Yeah, at so the end I'm, of the day. I, I, I need to shut up a little well, bit. I got to You're relax. right, though. You're well, not wrong. Well, I, I just, you know, I, I was just like, Jesus, people. Like, And then it hit me. Like, are we, were the, were the naysayers? What everybody was really listening to at the end of the day, when it sh it shouldn't have been trust. Negadelphia, that's what it was. Yeah, you know, and there's people that ne negadel. I just uh, I can't. Do we you, don't need. I say this every freaking show, don't I? Yes, you Go do. off about these negadelphians, these ten percenters. And was, they use ten percent of the ten percent of their brain to get ten. Ten percenters. Leonard Fournette, take them, take them. Top five back. Top, top five, five fantasy RB. Leonard Fournette.
<laughs> All right, that's the inside jokes right there. Um, keeping it moving. Hey, I wanted to hit this before we get out of here, I, I, and then we'll get some uh, final talks or final thoughts from you guys. 